Hey guys, what's up? Megan here and welcome back for another new moon ritual video. Today we are going to talk about the second new moon of 2022, which is falling in the air sign of Aquarius on January 31st. If you like this kind of video, please subscribe. I would love for you to stick around. I post new and full moon ritual guides every month and let's dive right in. So the second full moon in 2022 is going to be on January 31st at about 645 Eastern time. So this is also known as a black moon, which is when there are two new moons in the same month. The first new moon of the year was on January 2nd in the sign of Capricorn. And depending where you are, this new moon in Aquarius is going to fall either on January 31st or February 1st, which is in line with the Chinese lunar calendar. Or Chinese New Year. So Aquarius is ruled by the planet Uranus, which is the planet of shock, breakthroughs. Whenever there are any aspects or transits in Uranus, you can expect some shocking discoveries or sudden changes. So this new moon energetically might feel more like the start of a new year than maybe the one in Capricorn in January 2nd. Aquarius is an air sign, which is a common misconception because the Aquarius glyph does look water, and Aquarius is the water bearer. But I like to think of it almost like the legend of Prometheus, right? He's the one who's bringing fire and advancement and technology to the humans, where Aquarius, the water bearer, is bringing water and using that water to wash away any old or outdated beliefs or systems. Aquarius is a very free thinking, innovative, and technologically advanced sign. So some colors and glamour magic that you can incorporate into your ritual are blues, especially the electric blues, neon colors, blacks, metallics. I recommend trying to maybe modernize your look a little bit, maybe incorporate some cool cyberpunk or streetwear elements. I'm really feeling that. Some crystals that you can incorporate into your ritual are peacock ore, hematite, goldstone, or K2, which is also known as Rainbow Azurite. You want to think metallic or glassy or just kind of futuristic. Also, you can incorporate any earthy crystals like Moss Agate to ground the more airy Aquarius signs. Aquariuses tend to be free thinkers, a little bit more on the up in the clouds, uh, existential kind of sign. Aquarius rules the 11th house of partnerships, technology, collaboration. So I encourage you this month during the new moon to look to see what's in your 11th house and see if you're aligning with the high or low vibration of that sign. I recommend doing all of your new moon rituals within 72 hours on either side of the new moon. Obviously, the closer you get to the actual peak of the new moon on January 31st, that is when you are going to be able to harness the most energy. So I recommend doing anything you might deem, you know, most important, whatever that is to you on that day. So some things you can do this new moon are collaborate with someone in a hobby. So Aquarius is very collaborative. So say you're into dance, maybe do a collaboration with someone. Whatever your hobby is, try to incorporate another person into that and, and use those new ideas to grow your own ability and experience. The new moon in Aquarius is also a great time to think about shifting any old habits. An exercise that you can do, which I learned from James Cleary's Atomic Habits, is to go through your day and write down everything you do in that day. And then next to each thing you do, write either a plus, an X, or a minus for neutral. So for example, if you're going through your morning routine, you can write snooze your alarm, minus, P, you know, neutral, that's a dash, and then meditate for five minutes, that's a plus. And then just go through your day and see if there are any pockets where you're doing a lot of negative habits. Maybe you can work on shifting them this month. Aquarius is all about washing away those old habits that might not be serving you. The new moon is a great time to look at where Aquarius is in your birth chart and see if you can shift any beliefs around that house. So for example, I have Aquarius in my second house, so I might want to work on shifting my beliefs around money, abundance, success. As far as this new moon in Aquarius goes, think of it as trying to perform a software update for yourself. So think about areas where you can 1% better or where you can upgrade your life and replace habits or actions that aren't serving you with ones that are. Every month around the new moon, just to watch in the background while I might be doing other things, I like to put on a show that really aligns with the energy. This month, I recommend watching a documentary around something that's maybe a little avant-garde or out there. So for example, I'm going to be watching the documentary, The Witch of King's Cross, which is about a woman, an artist, 
who was known as a witch who had her art censored and drew a bunch of crazy occult things. Focus on expanding your mind around this Aquarius new moon and learning something new. I have more things you can do to harness the power of Aquarius season in my five things to do in Aquarius season video, which I will link below and above. So a meditation that I recommend you doing in Aquarius season is a loving kindness meditation. This meditation is often taught in Buddhist practice and it's basically sending love to everyone you know. So you want to start by obviously taking a few breaths and getting grounded and and then and focusing on someone you love and really sending love to them while you while you focus on the mantra may they be healthy may they be happy may they be free and repeat that for everyone you can think of you love and then move through people who maybe are acquaintances and then finally do that for people you might have more of a negative experience or relationship with you really want to genuinely focus on sending them love because Aquarius is the sign of partnerships and collaboration so it's a really good time to strengthen and focus on sending that beautiful heart chakra to others. I recommend doing this for maybe five to ten minutes before moving into the yoga during your new moon ritual. Aquarius rules the feet, ankle, and the circulatory system. If you know someone who's an air sign, they might have issues with their feet. It's the connection to the earth, and air signs tend to not be very grounded. Believe me, I'm a Libra, I know. And also, Aquarius with the circulatory system, if you're in the northern hemisphere, Aquarius is going to be in the dead of winter, so it's a really good time to do poses that bring blood and energy into your arms and extremities. So for Aquarius season, the yoga I like to do is any warrior sequence, eagle pose, ankle rolls, and some kneeling foot stretches. So some journaling questions for Aquarius season are, what does your authentic truth feel like? What blocks you from expressing your authentic truth? How do you want to feel each day? What pattern are you committed to breaking this new moon? And some tarot questions are, what energy will help me shift old patterns? What energy will support me in living my authentic truth? And what energy will allow me to upgrade my reality? This new moon, I invite you to set intentions around breaking old patterns and leaving things in the past that you don't want to bring into this new lunar calendar cycle. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you do any of these or if you have any questions. I would love to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.